in the dark shadows, in the white cold. Fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes. The order of the Abracast. We are the brave and the bold. Oh boy. Hey, what about these Pokemans? the fuck man you're you know what your post was the first thing that i i didn't even know it existed until i read that and i was like what the hell is he talking about no because why is he so angry I, 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 <laughs> I wasn't really, I, there was a lot of feigned distress I, 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 yeah i know but like we were at the park and like we were like walking on a trail and we just see these two kids just like bust out of like the woods with their phones like this and there's like total red face they're just pouring down so you can tell they've never been in the woods in their whole fucking lives that's kind of awesome though that it's yeah. like making people go outside and move around <laughs> it's like yeah it's like you kids got to get off your ass and go find that squirtle you yeah. know the, the riverview park it's up there somewhere so um, that's actually kind of smart right because like that whole generation that's like they're so pasty and they're inside <laughs> and they only that's their whole world it's like if it's virtual they like it yeah so like we're melding the two and they're like well maybe i will go out so what the fuck is that what is that what she is that a that sun fucking thing black <laughs> that's a sun son <laughs> but um yeah well but then there, it came out that there's all kinds of like weird like app requirements it's like collecting a bunch of <laughs> all kinds of data data on you and i, I saw that mysterious universe had something about that oh i, I haven't it, listened to it yet. I, no i saw this thing on gawker where they're like this guy i can't remember what his name is but his theory was well google can't drive one of their cars into your house to map the inside of your house so whenever they want to get a good look at an area, they just are going to throw these Pokemans down <laughs> and have these fucking kids wander around here, wander around taking pictures of all your shit. <laughs> I'll be fucking punching people in the throat. <laughs> well, I came home. There's someone knocking on your door. It's like, uh, yeah, it's the black eyed kids. No, it's the Pokemon yeah, kids. It's like, uh, I think Can they... we come in. No, you can't come in. <laughs> I think you have, you know, uh, you know, how they all have funny names that yeah. could be like a sex toy or racist in some way like <laughs> <laughs> the pocket monsters yeah yeah well i saw a pack like i was coming home from the liquor store the other day and there was a pack of kids standing outside my house with their goddamn telephones and i'm like hey are you kids looking for those pokemans and they're like yeah and i'm like is there any around my house like i'd like to know and they're like no we don't think so we we took a look around your backyard and i was just like what, what? <laughs> you were in my backyard you little fuck <laughs> Uh, don't bother. The, oh, did you, you didn't see the bodies back there, yeah, did you? Right, yeah. Because <laughs> the last Pokemon kids that came through, I fucking whacked them with a shovel. Shovel. A shovel. A shovel. That's one of those Pokemon. 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 You're right. It's, it looks like a shovel, but it's called a shovel. It's and you got can cute little eyes, and it yeah. fucking levels up to a bulldozer. Yeah. I saw something online like, like they were like in Auschwitz, and they were like all over like these monuments I, and in graveyards and shit. I don't know if they're in Auschwitz, but they were like in the um. In Chicago, there's a Holocaust yeah. memorial, and apparently there's, like, a ton of them, like, poking around the Holocaust memorial, and apparently there's some poking around, like, a 9-11 Oh, yeah, I saw too. that, yeah. So who, like, they, the, the, I guess they're self-aware, they just go there? No. Or like, they just, like, draw, they, like, scatter them there? Nintendo puts them there somehow. Their stocks <laughs> raised, like, 50% since, the, since they, they released They put the millions of them at Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, loaded yeah, with them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have the last laugh! <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, well, apparently, like, I don't know a whole lot about Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, can they be in your house? Like, I don't, I don't that know. That would be weird, like, like... That, that's kind of kind of spooky in a way. Yeah. Like I'm taking a shit and there's a Pokemon right there, and he's invisible unless I you have your augmented him. reality. Yeah, in the, front only of you. Kid, the kid next door sees <laughs> he sees him in there, but uh, but apparently there's like different kinds. So if you want to find like the Earth or the Earth based ones, you have to like go out to the forest, which is where uh, I found my two fucking losers. And yeah. then like if there's like water ones, like you have to go to like fountains and stuff, like <laughs> where like the uh, the Holocaust Memorial I think has water like pouring down. So there's probably all kinds of those. If you want to find like there's the, Nazi ones there. Yeah, yeah. The, the Nazos. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Nazo Genazos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's terrible. The Abracast, a cult history conspiracy. And violence.
Uh, welcome to the Abercast. I'm John Towers in the studio today. We have one of my favorite people on earth, uh, Mr. Dan Foydick. Dan, hello. Hello there, John. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hey, thanks for coming in. Um, so today, I'm always I, happy to come in. I think we're going to be talking about UFOs. Pocket monsters? No, no, we're done with the we're done with those Pokemons. <laughs> um, so you uh, you are a very successful podcaster. You run a number of podcasts. You want to talk about them real quick? Well, Since I think part of your research is coming from the story angle, let's let everyone know where where yeah. you're coming from. Well, I have uh, the Wicked Library, which. Uh, our good friend Nelson W. Piles created, and uh, he just recently turned, gave me the keys. It was like a year ago, dude. No, no, he officially gave me the show. Oh, so, oh okay. So, like, he's no longer the executive producer for it. Oh, all right. He's basically here. I mean, you, you're not going to mess it up, I, I don't think. He's a pretty busy guy. <laughs> a little does he know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's a, it's a narrative podcast focusing on... Horror, speculative fiction. Correct. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like an anthology podcast. So if you think of an anthology of short stories, that's essentially what the think show of like is. a Tales from the Crypt kind of thing. Yes. Something like this. All right. We even have the librarian who's the librarian. kind of creepy and very crypt keeper like. And uh, I also have uh, the Lift, which is one that I created with my friend Cynthia Loman, and it's a um, it's kind of like a Twilight Zone type esque show. Yeah, uh, it features a creepy little British girl by the name of Victoria Bigglesworth Hayes, uh-huh, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Uh, it's gotten pretty popular in uh, iTunes, and a lot of people tend to like it and listen to it. It's a lot of morality tales, so it has that horror element to it. But uh, you can kind of think of it like the Twilight Zone had a lot of morality tales. You know, you do bad <laughs> shit, bad shit's going to happen to you. Instant karma, exactly. Karma, uh, karma, apolix. Yes. You know, so she's in this creepy building, and uh, she controls an elevator that takes people to. You can kind of think of it like Dante's Inferno, where there's the nine different circles of hell. There's there each floor represents a different type of vice I, or sin. I always kind of I don't know if this is right or not. I always kind of think of it as like Fantasy Island. There's definitely a Fantasy Island Island element yeah. to it. I mean, in fact, when I describe it, a lot of times I'll say it's part. Twilight Zone, part Fantasy Island, maybe it's a little all, bit of Doctor Who. It's all linked, yes. like unlike the Twilight Zone, which are un- all unlinked. Yeah, they're all linked. They're all linked in some way, even if it's just having to do with the building and the right. Victoria character. Yeah, Victoria shows up in every episode, and some of the episodes are themed about her and her history and who she is. And then most of the episodes are kind of the monster of the week type of thing, where someone shows up in the building and learns their lesson. Learn your lesson, punk. That's right. <laughs> um, I also do a show called Listen, uh, which is just a collection of stories told by storytellers. So I go out and I collect these live tales, and then I put them out there in the world. And then the original show is Ninth Story Podcast, which I do with my friend Jeanette Andromeda. And uh, that is kind of an exploration of story and storytelling. So each show we take a topic or an item that's related to some form of storytelling and explore it. So like last week we talked to a graphic designer about how you use branding and, and art to make yourself more approachable to a larger group of people and how important it is to keep that consistent. And you know a lot about that from doing branding yourself. You come from the graphic design background as well. So, well, I liked being on your show when you had, when you got me super drunk and had me tell (laughs) you all about Christmas myths. That was fun. (laughs) Um, in a lot of ways, that's when I decided that I wanted to do this show all about the, the weird fucking shit we talk about here. So, yeah. Um, do you know, before we get started, do you know the eight most common shapes of UFOs? I, there's eight of them? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me th- uh, see how many I can get. Okay. Now, uh, this is all this is all based on research I did at a YouTube channel called Alien Federation. So, you go check those guys out and you hear they have they produce little YouTube videos about yeah. Now, are they serious? I mean, they're yeah, yeah, okay. Because yeah, I mean, you know, whenever I did research for the show too, I found that there were two, basically two types of websites out there. There were the ones where if they had a star field and like blinking, flashing shit on it, you it was knew all they green. were green. Yeah, it was like you knew green. they were crazy. <laughs> and, and then there was the ones where it was like someone actually put some time into it and you could take it seriously. It's like one of the things that always pisses me off is when you when you get into this topic, you can go one of two ways, and you can go the crazy route. Someone, you know, people take it like quasi. Seriously, like they'll play the X Files theme in the background. Yeah, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we have cigar. That's actually not on their list. I really? have, yeah, I have that on runner up. I have cigar slash dildo shape. 
<laughs> Dick shaped. <laughs> um, saucer, of course. Yeah, you have the classic saucer. Triangle. They don't have triangle on their really? list. They have something called a diamond shape. See, but there's triangle. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people talk about the triangle, but I They're- guess maybe because those are... Well, see, that's the thing. We should probably establish up front that UFO does not mean alien all the no, time. No, no, no. I mean, that's kind of like where everybody goes with it. But UFO is anything that's in the sky that you don't know what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. an unidentified flying object. Right. So a plane could be a UFO legitimately if you don't know that it's a plane. We're going to get into that, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Birds, you know, whatever. Project Grudge, all that shit. Um, Blue Book, right? Oh, it's, there's both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm two, I'm O for two. Yeah. Um, I got saucer shaped. Yeah. Um, uh, so there's, they actually break it down to saucer and they also have a canonical disc shape. So I'm not sure. So it's kind of like a, that's like a, that's like Madonna's, yeah, yeah, Madonna's right. tit thing. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there would be the sphere. Um, they have egg. They have an egg shape. These people are not serious, man. They don't know their shapes. Are <laughs> they right. have their... Uh, they, I'm going to say square, board cube. They don't have cube. Yeah, probably they, not. Because but they I'm do have a diamond they, shape. So if you just turn, turn your head to the side, yeah. yeah, that'll work out. Uh, they have a blinding light, which could be any color. So I imagine that's where the sphere could be, I okay. guess. Like the Foo Fighters? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I think we're going to get into the Foo Fighters a little... Not nice. the Dave Grohl. No. Not the... What they're named after. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they have top shaped on here as a number five. Okay. Well, that's kind of a conical shape, too. Yeah. And then they have coin like disc, which I don't know why they're like, make the differentiation. They that's sounded just... like they knew what they were talking about when I was, okay. when I was doing the research. I'll, okay. And then the last one coming in at number three is football shaped, I've which kind of seems like an egg shape to me, too. Yeah. I, f- I have a feeling there's a lot of semantics uh, over there. I can't believe they didn't have triangles in, no. in cigar shape. Yeah. Actually, like I said, I, cigar get- shape is on my runners up and giant triangle. I made the distinction. Giant, giant triangle. triangle. And then also there's these things called flying humanoids, which I think are really crazy. Wow. Have yeah. you seen these things? I've heard about it, but I have A lot of third world, like Mexico... Uh, South America have oh, these. That's right. Yeah, because yeah, the guys on Mysterious Universe have talked about that before. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure, but like I, I see them, like on documentaries and stuff, and people are like trying to like. What are the What are the Mexican wrestlers called? Lucha Libres. Yeah, so they have them flying through the sky. Yeah, yeah. There's like <laughs> <laughs> it's Superman, and they yell like things like. I don't well. The modern one would be when they were talking about the, what's that, Washington State, where the pilot cited um, craft that he said they were like saucers skipping across the pond. Yeah. Okay. And, and that was kind of like, and I, if I remember correctly, like later interviews, he said that he didn't think they were actually saucer shaped. They, he, they looked like they were behaving like saucers skipping across the pond. All right. So let me take you back. Okay. Uh, June 24th, 1947. Okay. We're just coming out of World War II. Um, this guy, he's a, he's, he's a salesman. He sells uh forest fighting equipment, forest firefighting equipment. Okay. He's flying home to Yakima, Washington, but across the radio comes this thing saying, Hey, we we're putting out a $5,000 reward for anyone who could spot the wreckage of this Marine transport that just went down near Mount Rainier. Okay. So he spent an hour tooling around Mount Rainier and I got to say M- Mount Rainier is beautiful. I used to be able oh, yeah. to see that from my fucking window when I was in the army. Yeah. Like we wake up. You know, you have a hangover, you're looking out the the window to see this gigantic fucking mountain. It's beautiful. Anyhow. Yeah. Um, so he uh, he spends a little bit of time flying around. He decides, after an hour, he decides to call it quits. Um, and he uh, turns, I think he turns southwardly. So this guy's a pilot, too. He's, a, he's okay. flying a single engine plane. Gotcha. Okay. So I think he turns southerly. Like, I think you got to go, you got to go, I don't know. I think he turned southerly. He's got to get the Yakima he's, somehow. He's going in the opposite direction where he was going. Right. right. Okay. So, um, and then he sees uh, nine uh, boomerang-shaped discs, or nine boomerang-shaped vehicles, I guess, skipping like saucers across the lake is how he he describes it. Um, he does some kind of pilot, super secret pilot test that he has that he could do, and he... Um, he guesstimates that they're traveling between 18 and 12,000 miles an hour. I'm wow. not sure what kind of scientific 
test he's doing. Like he's yeah, wiping his window, either. he's cleaning his glasses. I you know I don't really know. <laughs> he's probably like comparing them to like things that he knows the size of in the distance. I mean, I'm assuming if he's a pilot in that area, he flies that route. And he probably knows distances and that type of thing. Yeah, but when I was a kid, um, I grew up with these uh, like um, encyclopedia of weird oh, shit, yeah, like yeah. all over the place. In the first five thousand miles away, her <laughs> hand is burning. <laughs> well, um, I remember seeing this, and I remember I remember the first time I heard the story. It, he says that they're boomerang shaped. Yeah. Nowadays, when you do research on that, you can't hardly find that anywhere. Like, because it's become it's, such a lexicon or changed in, in popular culture that everybody thinks saucers. It's saucer. That's but what it is. That's his statement is that they were moving like saucers. Yeah, yeah. But that became flying saucers. It became the flying saucer, and that became like the paradigm of yeah. it. Um, so uh, uh, the following week, thousands of reports of these flying saucers flooded in from all over the world not even just america like everywhere so they were here for a visit i guess it was like a little soft invasion they were just coming down just to say hi this is like when uh well there was the the maybe we'll get to that later but there was the washington dc invasion too where like people were reporting all over the skies in washington oh yeah it's actually it was a it was a multiple day event it actually happened two consecutive saturdays in a row I can tell you about the Phoenix Lights because I lived there at that time. That was during the uh, Hell Bob Comet. Everybody was up looking, looking in the sky for that thing. They were looking to see her Faffle White waving goodbye. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Bo Peep. <laughs> so uh, they thought that it was a oh part of the scientific test that he did. Also, when he was looking at these things, he he thought that maybe it was a reflection off of something. Mm-hmm. So he like he rocked the his airplane back and forth to see like if yeah. the reflections would move corresponding to his mo- the movement of the airplane like right. it refracting through the window a different way um when he got when he got on the ground he's like yeah you know he reported it to one of his friends and he's like yeah, it felt really weird and immediately like the first thing he said was i think that i saw a military test aircraft mm-hmm. like that's what he that's what he said for a a, a long time in this story we're going to find out that Nobody believed this was an extraterrestrial until like one certain point, and we'll talk about the point where it's coming up. But everyone's just kind of like, it's, it's when the robots showed up to interview him. It's the Ruskies. Like everyone yeah. thought it was the commies took those. Like at the end of uh, World War Two, now that's a that's a word that takes me back to the 1940s. The commies <laughs> were coming into the country in Washington. It's right across the over the ocean there. Well, they um uh, at the end of World War Two, we kind of divided up the Nazi rocket scientists. Right, exactly. And we took half of them. Project they Paperclip. Took, we took half of them, they took half of them. So we're like, we took the bad ones. <laughs> well, apparently, if they're building these fucking yeah. things, like we got the guys that are just like, no, just let's make a big rocket. <laughs> let's just <laughs> make things, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, that's the story of Kenneth Arnold. And that's where we that's where we get the, the idea, like the first kind of things about discs. Mm-hmm. Now, before that, I'm just going to take a step back. Before that, in, Foo War, in World War II, we had the Foo Fighters. Like, we already kind of mentioned that. Yeah, the little glowing orbs. Yeah, and they would, like, harass and attack airplanes mm-hmm. in both theater in both theaters of war. A lot of people were like, well, we think that they're um, St. Elmo's Fire, like that Demi Moore movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Demi Moore's boob. <laughs> or like... Um, in uh uh in Moby Dick when Captain Ahab held his his harpoon up and he got the St. Elmo's fire on it. Yeah. It's some kind of like static electric phenomenon that creates like a glow like a glowing yeah, kind or of, like, like ball, ball lightning, lightning or something yeah. like this. So that's what a lot of uh a lot of the brains thought that these things were at the time. No one disputed whether they were there or not. Like everybody kind of seen them. Mm-hmm. And you you talk about these uh World War II pilots who are like they're uh, their experience they know what they're doing up there they're trained observers you know like today people would be like oh those are remote vehicles those are uh, the drones they're drones yeah. exactly that's what people would have said today um but yeah i mean it's almost like one of the you know stories that i had seen before that was kind of fun was you know they're they're observers from the future this is like this huge world war ii conflict and they're just like wow let's go and check all this shit out yeah another thing is like they could kind of be like gremlins like there was a story of like um gremlins like attacking machinery and stuff usually mm-hmm. that's on the ground this is a kind of would be like an airborne version of that i guess not quite <laughs> um but there's another thing that they could that they could be or it could be a confirmation of a, a mm-hmm. bunch of these things there's this thing called a fugu do you know what this is is that like a pokemon no no it's okay. not it's it's actually a little bit crazier than pokemon's uh. 
Um, so Japan realized that they wanted to make like a terror weapon mm-hmm. and they wanted to attack uh, the continental United States. Okay. But this was before they had rockets and shit. So one dude was like, hey, there's these things called jet streams way up in the air. And there's one that goes from Japan all the way up, all the way through the Pacific Ocean and ends up at the um, the West Coast of America. Okay. So he built these fucking balloons. They're called fire balloons. They're called fugus. He built these gigantic fucking balloons and he created this device that hangs off the balloon that had fucking bombs on it. And, nice. And they were controlled. Uh, the balloon goes up to a certain altimeter mm-hmm. uh, or a certain height up off the, off the ground. Yeah, a certain altitude. And it, um, it arms these bombs. And then as the balloon starts losing its thing and starts drifting down and down and, and lower and lower in the air, it starts letting these things go every, you know, how many ever hundreds or thousands hmm. of, of feet. <clears throat> um, so they let like, they let 9,000 of these things go from, from Japan to North America. And a lot of them got here. Really? Yeah. They found these things uh. in California, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, North oh, Dakota, shit. Oregon, South Dakota, um, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. They also found some in Mexico and Canada. Wow. I've never heard of this. Yeah. So there was actually some detonations. Like when you hear in the 40s about like people that hear like um, loud explosions and no one can figure out where they're coming from. It's attested to a lot of, to these things. Had one fatality out of 9,000 balloon launches, 9,000 of these weapons went up. Um, there was one fatality. It was this woman. Uh. This woman and shit, I think it was, I can't remember. I don't, I didn't write it down. I just wrote one fatality, but yeah. Um, and it didn't even fall on her. I believe it. The, when the rig crashed, the bomb was still active and something happened and it went off when she was like investigating, investigating. She was hanging the laundry in the backyard. Just a boom. Um, and for that, <laughs> we bombed those motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, your damn daddy Jeff, we're coming for you. So these things, they were actually, that was my aunt Mabel. <laughs> Uh, uh, so these things were actually the longest range attack in history of warfare until 1982 because huh. we didn't have rockets and stuff yeah. in, in 1982. During yeah, we the, didn't get the Germans until after the war. Right, exactly. We didn't score them yet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but during the Falklands War, they had some kind of like missile that traveled farther than that or something. I'm not an expert the in the Falklands. Islands. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, that could explain some of those pre Kenneth Arnold um mm-hmm. ufos you know as well what do you think about it? you never heard of that huh i had never heard of that i mean it doesn't sound like they were under intelligent control which is kind of the thing about <laughs> the foo fighters is that they were quick moving and you know they would interact with the with the, the craft i mean i guess you know they could get caught in your wind stream or something like that it's interesting though i've never heard of that I yeah mean, but i know that they reported a, lo- a lot in the european theater as well not not the fugus but the um the Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were they were in both theaters, you know, um the Pacific and the right. and the European. <laughs> so um the Kenneth Arnold thing took place in June 24, 1947. Mm-hmm. We're going to bring our story up just a few weeks later. Roswell. <laughs> the Roswell incident. So right. what do you know about like what do you know about the Roswell incident? Stanton Friedman. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, um Roswell I was watching one documentary. There's tons of documentaries. I mean, like, I, 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 we could probably do, like, a study. Like, there's probably more documentaries on Roswell than any other topic. Probably. Um, but, and, you, and, you know, the, uh, it didn't emerge into, like, the public consciousness until, until like, the, the 80s. Until the right? 80s, yeah. yeah. Um, after this whole thing went, well, hold on, we'll get there. But it's, like, one, one general told all the press hey we got a ufo no, we got our flying saucer well, alien that, craft that's right? what that jesse Mar- marcel said mm-hmm. and everyone's like oh yeah we got one of these alien crafts we got one of well, these that was flying the first saucers. press releases yeah yeah and the next day this general comes down he's like no 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 it's a weather balloon he got the whole world to think that this this where the roswell base was mm-hmm. or the air force base associated with roswell mm-hmm. was the only atomic bomb yes. wing in the world and they had like probably like the best intelligence officers you would think would yeah. be there 
This one general was like, no, no, these guys don't know what they're talking. They can't tell the difference between a w- fucking weather balloon. That's the, it, more frightening than the fact that an <laughs> alien craft. I would, I would be less frightened about an alien craft crashing there than I would be about like these bumbles don't know what they're doing <laughs> right. and they got the bomb. <laughs> okay, so um, I met Jesse Marcel Jr. and 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 he seemed like he was. I mean, he was he was uh, the son. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he's he seemed, the one that has the story about how you could take the metal and crinkle yes. it up and it pops back yeah, out. Yeah, because his dad brought home like a shoebox full of this stuff and then later they came and took it but yeah he said that that was one of the things that really bothered his dad is that they made him pose with pictures or for pictures with stuff that was not what he had found he he might as well have just been wearing a t-shirt that says i'm fucking clown shoes (laughs) (laughs) so um so this rancher named max brazel Mm -hmm. uh reports to the sheriff or whomever of roswell new mexico that a ufo is crashed in his in his fucking ranch yeah in in the in his field so the air force guys go out there and they're like holy shit so they go out and they recover whatever they can recover. Like mm-hmm. you said, uh, Marcel takes this box home. Mm-hmm. Um, the the base PR officer issues um, a press release saying we've recovered a flying saucer. A flying desk, yeah. No mention of alien bodies or anything. All that comes later. Yeah. Um, they actually go to the to the town of Roswell. He gives the press release to the fucking DJ who's on air at the time. And he's like, go, tell everybody, tell everybody. And the DJ's like... Are you kidding me? This is crazy. I'm not going to I'm not going to say this over the radio. <laughs> Cuz he's afraid he's going to wind up in a gulag or something right. somewhere, you know what I mean? Um but the news gets out and then like I, in my story earlier, you know, the whole world's just like, "Oh, we got one of these flying saucers." And like General Ramey is the guy who goes, "No, no, no, no. My dudes here, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They found a weather balloon. They made him pose with like a weather weather balloon." Mm-hmm. And you can see that picture. He's just like a cuckold. Like yeah. he's just like uh, yeah, can't you see how I made this mistake? <laughs> it looks just like one of these things. It's a bunch of balsa wood. Of course I thought that was uh, some sort of strange alien contraption. Yeah. So um, a few weeks after that, uh, they've signed, um, they signed something called the National Securities Act, which creates the National Security Council and... The Central Intelligence Agency. It's weird how this happens right after that event, yeah, right? Yeah, we- it's like two fucking we- two or three weeks after. They're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's something, we our- something weird happened. I mean, whether you believe in aliens or not, there's just too many coincidences around that time frame. And it's almost like we set off the bomb, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, let's go see what the fuck they're up to <laughs> over there. Because that's pretty dangerous. That's the, uh, the, uh, the day the Earth stood still. Yeah, the, the the whole plot of that movie. <laughs> like the, I mean, to me, it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, they've now become, they now have nuclear power. This is like in First Contact, where mm-hmm. it's like the when the crazy drunk guy goes into um, warp speed for the first time. Oh yeah, and all the Vulcans are like, hey, we we, we gotta we, go talk to those guys now. We've we've uh, we detected a warp signature, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's dangerous. So we got to go rein those fuckers in. So. They kind of restructure the whole kind of military after this and like our intelligence capabilities and all of this stuff. And mm-hmm. there was this guy named Lieutenant General Twining, who is the commanding officer of something called the Material Command um, or sorry, the uh, the Air Material Command. And he published this top secret report that says that these uh it's a study on UFOs in general, not just what happened at Roswell. And he said that the, something is real with these. Uh, he mentions the maneuverability, the radar uh, evasion, the speed in which these things move, and that they are intelligently controlled, like you said before. Mm-hmm. At least a portion of them are. So he's giving himself a little wiggle room here, saying, well, right. you know, the people are still idiots, but, you know, something's going on here. Right. <sighs> so this is when they, um, they create this thing called Project Sign. And uh, it was launched. Majestic 12? I don't think that comes until later. Right. Uh, yeah. This is like the first one. Okay. And this is uh, the Air Tactical Intelligence Center at Wright-Patterson um, in Ohio. And this is, they still think that these guys are Soviets. They're just like, hey, it's just the Ruskies. And in 1948, Project Sign published a report estimating that a portion of these UFOs were extraterrestrial. So here's where we're kind of moving away from... You know, they're the commies with right. these Nazi 
robot scientists or whatever to where they're <laughs> like this could these the capability of these crafts are it's enough for us to say that a portion of them not only are real but a portion of them are from off world mm mm-hmm. Or you know that's what they're that's well, what yeah, they're the, saying. Yeah, the little bodies help too to let you know that that's probably not the Russians. <laughs> well, so the powers that Vlad's got some big black eyes. <laughs> what are they feeding these Russians over there? <laughs> Look these, at his head; it's huge. <laughs> these progies are really hell on the the, com- the complexion. <laughs> that's right. Your body is your temple, so let's make sure you got a badass T-shirt on it. Variety of cool occult themed t shirts and other merch like stickers, wall art, mugs, and more. Visit the storefront on abracast.com. Uh, oh, this Stroganoff. Oh, I sh- it's the vodka. We all know it pickles you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Makes your head larger. <laughs> so the powers that be did not like this project sign report at all. You know, because mm-hmm. it's like it's impossible. How are you going to keep morale and like the feeling of safety? Yeah, if, because if you, there's something that is well beyond our ability to protect. There's no way we can protect ourselves. That's right. So they did. They did a real grown up thing. Where, they lied. No, they took all the reports and they fucking burned them. And they were like, <laughs> "We never saw that shit. We don't know what you're talking about." All the happen. information got uh, got uh, went underground, and then they were replaced by this thing called Project Grudge. So it's like whenever I took my parents' car out for the first time before I had my driver's license, and I scratched up the side of it, and I was like, "Hey, I got some paint that's about the same color." <laughs> <laughs> Did you really do that? That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> that's what it reminds me of, though. I mean, that's like. Well, we'll just hide this shit poorly. <laughs> and then you can just f- like feign ignorance. Just lie about it. No, some street tough wasn't, must have tried to fix the scratch on your car. Wasn't me. <laughs> but I saw you. Wasn't me. But, but your neighbor said it wasn't me. But the paint from the spray paint is on your finger. Wasn't me. No, man. So um, Just deny. So they tore apart this Project Sign thing, and they replaced it with Project Grudge, mm-hmm. which was put in place... Only to give mon- mundane excuses for this phenomenon, or to debunk it, as people in the industry call I like it. The, the, the code name is Grudge. It's yeah, like, it's pretty grudge innocuous. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck you, people. It wasn't us. It wasn't an alien. It was the Russians. So this is when you get. In the fact, st- it didn't happen at all. It wasn't anybody. So this is when you get the stories of like. Oh no! What you saw was like Venus reflected off the swamp gas, and uh, it was a fucking lightning bug stuck in the fucking the window of your airplane. Yeah, you know this is these are real excuses that they gave for. I these know things. you're a trained pilot, but you have no idea what you're talking about. Right? <laughs> so you're just even terrible. Right, yeah. so, from from the X Files, you remember that? No other object has been misidentified as the planet Venus, or, or as UFO as the planet Venus. You okay? Yeah. Um, okay, That's another wrestler. <laughs> um, so from forty nine to fifty one, um, it was pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, we, I mean, we had some things going on. Like there was this thing called the Paul Trent UFO photo. Now I'm sure. Hold on, I think this I can, is also around like when the Brady saw. No, that's later. <laughs> I think that I can paint a, a, enough picture of you for you to envision in your mind what okay. this photo looks like. It's it's black and white. It's kind of grainy, and it looks kind of like a, a hubcap with a string coming off of it, kind of going <laughs> off the thing. <laughs> That's, I can't remember this that's photo. The, that's the Paul Trent photo. Okay. Someone where like you threw a hubcap and took a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then there was a, a something called a Mariana technology uh, called a Mariana film, and then there was a William Brookhouse Smith documents. So those are like the big three things. Okay. Um, Grudge of, eventually got reorganized into Blue Book, which was a little bit more pragmatic in their approach. They were kind of more science minded, like they kind of. Yeah, got into like witness testimony and swamp gas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that brings us up to 1951. And okay. as we all know, 1952 brings in what's called <laughs> the great saucer wave of 52. Yes. Um this is <laughs> This is when in uh July 19th of 52 there's radar blimp, blimps over wa- Washington. Okay. They actually scramble some fighter jets up there to see what's going on. The fighter jets chase these things away the very next saturday the same things happen except when they scramble the jets over the 
the UFOs don't just fly away. Like, they actually kind of engage with the... Um, oh, really? Yeah. They don't, like, fire at them, but they, like, box them in and kind of, like, control where they're flying. They, like, they box them in uh, by, like... So it's like whenever I used to go to my sister, and I'm not touching you. Yeah. I'm not touching you. It's like a rolling roadblock, kind yeah. of, you know. Oh, those motherfuckers. Um, so it, it became... Ter- like, in the wake of all that, it became terrifying. Um, and the... The powers that be or the government, whoever, decided that the way to mitigate this is they have to make it into a joke. Like, because you can't right. be like, yeah, you can't, we, 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 we don't we, really, we can't really keep up with this technology. We have no idea where these things are coming from, you know. So instead of living in fear, they decided to root, like ridicule, like box it in, ridicule it, and make it into like something. Right. To so laugh anytime at. somebody brings up the subject, they're, they're, they're labeled as a nut. Ex- exactly. And, you know, this is when you get like, like, you can't have a serious conversation about it at this point because they make fun of you. And, and, and I mean, that's actually brilliant psychology. Well, I it's mean, like propaganda. It's like, yeah. bull, it's like bullying. I don't know what they would call it now. Psyops. Yeah. Like, but totally like, um, this is when you get the people that are like, oh no, like I, you know, like the contactees, mm-hmm. like they weren't abductees back then. Like, you mm-hmm. know, the Nordic, the, U, the fucking Nordic aliens yeah. would come down and take you to their planet and like. Show you their tits. Have picnics with you and stuff. Boink you. (laughs) The hot ones. So after the moon landings and stuff, um, in uh, the moon landings and stuff in the 60s, uh, there was... That's interesting, too. Like, all the the stuff that the the astronauts would report. Yeah. Like, not officially, but unofficially report. I mean, you think about it, though. Like, if you were an alien culture and you were checking us out... The next step going into space, that would be pretty interesting, too, right? Yeah. And then, well, also, and then you think about, like, well, what put us in check? That we're not going anywhere anymore. <laughs> it, it, right. Why have we not left or, or gone to Mars? I mean, yeah. that, that was the next logical step, and it never happened. We stopped going to the moon and everything. It's kind of like, yeah, you guys can stay here. Right. But nowhere else. We don't else. want you to go anywhere else. You got enough of your shit everywhere else. Like <laughs> Until you grow up and start fuck, stop fucking with people. So in the... um. In the the sixties, this guy named J- Jacques Vallee, he wrote this book called Passport to Mangonia, mm-hmm. and it was all about uh, expanded consciousness of the universe and like meditating. And he's linking these ideas of fairies and angels up with UFO v- uh, visitations, right? And I think this is is kind of cool that this is kind of like where we meet because I know, like, I think a lot of your stuff kind of starts at this point yeah the alien abduction and and back in in our traditions and our cultural traditions where we talk about being abducted by fairies and taken away to fairyland and you know people being having sleep paralysis experiences and um i mean like alien the whole alien abduction phenomenon or the whole um interaction with the with the with the strange and those from beyond is a tradition that goes way back to you know early times. It's not just a modern thing. Yeah, like, we've dressed them up as you know the aliens now, but the the whole uh, you know the whole experience has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Well, do you have like um, lost time? Do you have like yeah? Do you have like a a story or kind of like an archetypical story about like what would happen in like a, in these fairy mounds where these guys they go in and they like eat something that they shouldn't and they wind up staying in there for a hundred years and they stumble out and fucking everything's different. Yeah. I mean, there's the, you know, you never eat, you never eat the, eat the food or drink the drink because, you know, once they offer you that and you partake of it, it's like the forbidden fruit. You're not supposed to take it. Once you take it, strange things start to happen. You become part of that world instead right. of like an alien in that world or something. Exactly. Um, but I mean, yeah, they would have like these fairy rings that people would wake up in the middle of and they'd be like, they'd go to bed at night and in the morning they'd wake up outside in these fairy rings, which, you know, if we go into modern times, we talk about people that are being taken by alien craft and waking up in a depression or a mark in the field, crop circles. I mean, the crop circle thing goes back you know, thousands and thousands of years. They used to call them devil circles. Um, the mowing devil. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it, like a lot of these things, they're just, it always seems like the craft and the things that they see are just slightly ahead of where they are technologically because they used to be airships, you know, and they'd see like blimp like things before we had blimps, you know, and um, it's just like they're one or two steps away from like our cultural 
like indication or right. something. Right. It's like, well, we're just going to put it just slightly ahead of where they're going. I'll tell you what, man. One time I was, uh, my wife and I were headed out to her folks place and they kind of like live in like a little, a little more rural area. They live okay. out like Jeanette Greensburg kind of nice. And we're like out on this windy road and just like, there's trees and stuff. And we hit this clearing and you could see it plain as days. This is a blimp, but I was so not expecting it. I was like, what the fuck? You know, and it was just this fucking like low flying blimp. And it, as soon as I saw it, I was able to like process it. But before I was able to process it, I'm like, this is one of those giant fucking triangles that everybody yeah. fucking talks about. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. I mean, it, it has been a, a part of our culture for a long time and it, and it makes you wonder, is it because they've been here for a long time? I mean, you've seen ancient aliens, which I mean, I loved that show when it started out. It was very interesting. But, I mean, it, it got to the point at a certain point where it kind of turned the corner. It was like dinosaurs were, you know, they're talking about how, did you know the dinosaur bones, they're all slightly radioactive? That's because <laughs> of the nuclear war that the aliens had on our planet. And Giorgio Tsoukalos' hair just kept getting bigger and bigger. And it's like, how can you take anything this man say, says seriously at this point? Well, that's kind of, a lot of people would say that's kind of like the... 70s kind of continuation of making it ridiculous like making yes, the idea exactly. ridiculous you know and it's like it's to its cartoonish point now like yeah. you know where it's like uh not only is it everywhere like it might as well just be the discovery fucking or the history fucking channel of <laughs> ancient aliens <laughs> ancient alien theorists say you know there's a drinking so, you drink every time he says ancient alien theorists and ancient alien scientists or ancient alien specialists yeah, or if he goes, and if so, and if so, why? Uh, you finish your drink at yeah, that right. point. <laughs> um, is it possible? Well, of course, anything's possible. Yeah. So, um, so well, have you ever have you ever seen mysterious lights in the sky? Or I mean, you mentioned before that you were in Arizona at the yeah. time of the Phoenix Lights. I mean, we saw those, and it was very interesting because we were next to. You know, Luke Air Force Base, and they scrambled all the fl the fighter. I mean, you could see the fighters, or the planes up there. You know, you can tell the difference between a commercial fight plane and a and a, a giant you, silent floating triangle. <laughs> yeah, and military aircraft. I yeah. mean, you've been in the military, so you know there's definitely a different structure and way that they fly. Yeah. Um. Than than a commercial airliner, but yeah, there was. Um. Everybody was looking at the the sky anyway because the comet was here, the Hellbach comet, and um. So that's why, you know, people saw this thing. And it would, when it when there were certain parts of this, like you'd get outside of the city. Now, was there just one or were there multiple ones? I always, I guess I assume that there were multiple it ones. It was multiple nights. Um, there were more than one light, but some people report that, the you know, it was a very large craft that had lots of lights on it. Other yeah. people say that there were individual craft. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there were people that were reporting that the craft were, like, merging or joining up together. I mean, there's a lot of talk about that. But the the, the interesting part is, like, the ones that we saw, it, it would block out the sky. So, like, as it was going over, it would block out the stars. Wow. So you couldn't see. I mean, it, it would definitely, like, it was huge, yeah. you know, um, or it was very, very close. One of the two, and if it was very close, it would have looked different. I think. Well, and you I mean, get I'm like, not a trained observer, but it was definitely a weird thing. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine how it would be not weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not something that you would commonly see. I mean, I not only because of the comet, but I mean, I used to look living out in the desert. There, it was one of the cool things is we would go out and we would look at the stars. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I did look at the sky quite a bit, and I had never seen anything like that before. Wow. Uh, when I was a kid. Um, my old man saw lights in the sky while he was driving. Oh yeah, and he like pulled over and he, he got Did out. He lose twelve minutes? No, but I was like, this is just like fucking Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Like, get back in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he went home later on and started building he built mashed a, potatoes. Yeah, he built a gigantic mountain of mashed potatoes. <laughs> um, but I remember like he wouldn't let me out of the car, and I didn't really see the whatever started the whole thing. But when I would look out through the window, I could see jets flying around like they were fucking looking for something. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was crazy, but I didn't ever get to see it, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've all, I mean, everybody's had some sort of brush with something that they can't really explain. Um, but there's, I don't know, it, It's to me it's interesting because I think that there's, there's something to it. I mean, it's been around for a long, long time. I mean, we can take the art angle, too, where there's... Um, things in, in paintings from, from way back that look very strange. Yeah. Now, 
what does that mean? Does that mean that somebody just has a really good imagination? Or does it mean that there's something more to it? It's, it's, and if so. And if so, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, did you want to talk about like your, this DM, the DMT angle and stuff? That's interesting, too, because we all we all produce DMT. Yeah. Um, it's it's naturally produced in the body, and it's produced by your, your pineal gland or the third eye. The third eye. eye. Um, and people that are on it, it's on this naturally occurring drug, report seeing creatures that are alien-like, that are reminiscent of the greys. Um, and there's a lot of people that talk about, are there other ways to, like, for instance, uh, Crowley, I know you're familiar with, or Crowley. Mr. Crowley! Um, had Lem, right? Who looked suspiciously like a gray. Yeah. And there's this school of thought that there are other ways to communicate with these creatures or beings or whatever you want to call them, where, you know, you can tap into this uh, ability to communicate with people across vast distances. And of course, in this case, the aliens um, and people that take DMT or, you know, have the natural release of DMT at night. Whenever you're dreaming, people report, you know, sleep paralysis and abductions at night, of course, and seeing gray aliens. People that are on DMT report seeing and talking and interacting with gray aliens. Um, and if you get roofied, you wake up and you got anal probed. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's it's one of those things where it's interesting. Is it like something that's naturally in our collective culture? And we talk a lot about, I know you as a storyteller are a fan of the work of Joe Campbell. And we have this monomyth. We have this collective subconscious where there are certain archetypes that speak to us as humans. And why do we see these gray aliens? What is it about our our archetype, our, our humanity. Is it something else? Well, it's like cross-cultural, too, like the Hopis or some of the native, right. the First Nation people. Star people. They have, like, um, they have these stories about how they don't, they come from under the mm -hmm. under the earth and their friends are the ant people who look like the fucking greys. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they talk about the star people and there's a lot of that in. Oh, in it's that Hopi, movie. yeah, that Hopi star knowledge and all this. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, there, there's definitely this this cultural imperative or this cultural uh, reference point where we all think about this these others that are teachers and, and beings that are wiser than we are. And what is their agenda? And if so. If so. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it the whole DMT thing, since it is a naturally occurring chemical, it's, a, it's essentially a hallucinogen. It, 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 it's interesting because does that mean that we are just prone to see this and experience this type of thing, you know, to be taken from where we consider to be safe and to be taken by these creatures that are different but similar to us? Yeah. Um, and and then of course you know maybe there's something more to it. I don't know. It's it's inter it's an interesting topic. Yeah, I mean, I think that we could probably fill a few hours up with like all aspects of this kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh especially like the abduction like abduction phenomenon and, and all this but focusing back on the like the ufos like if you were that dude in close encounters would you get on the fucking ufo sure why not man because when that ramp c goes down and those real tall like the eight foot grays with the real spindly arms mm -hmm. they're creepy i wouldn't get on there with them i don't know man what's the worst that can happen you're going to die, right? Anal probe. Well, <laughs> some, some well people, I am 40. I'm 42. I should be thinking about anal probes right now anyways. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll fix you up if you got, you know, if you got hemorrhoids and your ass is falling out, they'll take care of you. Uh, yeah, I guess that's that spirit of adventure. At least you wouldn't be making gigantic uh, mountains out of your mashed potatoes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, when I was a kid, I always wanted a UFO. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I grew up in, on like Star in Wars. No, I grew up on Star Wars. Oh, like, okay. To me, is like my choice of vehicles was the Millennium Falcon, the Bandits Trans Am, and that was it. Like those were the only two fucking things. The One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know it's it's funny because I had this conversation. Um, I think there was alcohol involved with somebody, and uh, we were talking about like what would you do if if you walked like if you were walked into your kitchen and there was a gray in there. I would punch him. Exactly. See, that's the thing. That was my response. I'd be like, I'd fucking clock the son of a bitch because yeah. they're not expecting that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, they would. 
probably because they, you know, they come at you with these little tiny, and they have the technology and everything, right, to, yeah. to take you and probe you. But what if you just like clocked them and knocked them out and just started beating the fuck out? Like, of them? think about how great of a story Benny and Barney Hill would be is if when they were when they were taking James Earl Jones and the and the, the the UFO, if instead of just freaking out and like going with them, if he just fucking went ape shit and just yeah, fucking chew, the fuck. Chewbacca them up, that would be awesome. <laughs> I actually have a story in my graveyard uh, about my character Stitch being abducted by aliens and waking up and because he's crazy, like their mind voodoo, their mind wizardry doesn't mm-hmm. work on him and he's able to like just uh, fucking like okay. go off. So there you go. I just gave that away for everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I got some. Um, I, w- I dug out some um, some of the my funnest or most mysterious UFO sightings. Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I tell you a couple? A no, couple no, no, of that's awesome. <clears throat> now, hey, let me ask you a question. You have um, you have some references to aliens in your work, right? Um, I play with the idea that kind of what we were just talking about, like the divine and what we perceive as aliens and what we perceive as the divine, kind of get blended up. Yeah, so it's like the whole the whole Arthur C. Clark thing. Clark thing that uh, any technology that's sufficiently advanced appears as magic. And you go back to the whole biblical thing, like what were these these yeah, al- like, these uh, angels and well, when you the jinn and all you know all these these cultural references that we have, what were they really? Well, like when you look at stuff like Ezekiel, and this isn't anything new. Like people have been looking at his description of these um, uh, these wheel aliens mm-hmm. or whatever. People for since the seventies, probably earlier than that, have been like, "Hey, this sounds like a fucking UFO and not an angel." You know, it's funny when you look at the Bible with like modern context and you'd be like what were they really trying to say because they're using <clears throat> not only has it been through how many translations yeah but oh, well in editing just endless ed- editing, editing and exactly editing and editing but i mean you know if you look at it with modern context what were they trying to say that's the whole um chariots of the gods Van, Van, uh, von donica right yeah oh er, uh, yeah 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 but yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know that you've played with that topic before in, in some of your work which I yeah some of my um uh, sometimes when I do cherubims, I make them kind of look like greys with little stubby with little stubby wings. <laughs> in the next, in the upcoming graphic novel, I have them um, because um, sometimes cherubims are described as warriors with four faces: a mm-hmm. face of a ox, a face of a lion, a face of a man, and a face of an eagle. Okay, with multiple sets of wings. So I'm trying to reconcile that with how I did cherubim before, and when I made it into like a battle suit. So like the oh, little okay, gray, guy, awesome. like the little gray looking guy, like he's in there controlling. Yeah, he gets it. in. Like, oh, it's okay, like a yeah, fucking yeah. power armor with these f- fucking faces, and they turn around, and each one of them, like every frame, the head's like rotating and talking out of its. That's awesome. It, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, you were going to tell me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The weird. <laughs> okay, so um, 1981 in this place in France, uh, Trans and Provolone. It's not provolone. I just don't know how to fucking pronounce it. <laughs> this guy named Renardo Nicolai. He was working in his garden in France. With gnomes. And there's probably a gnome around. A small disc, six and a half feet uh, in diameter, dropped down from the sky in front of him while he was working. Um, for a few minutes, just checked him out, and then disappeared. Did he continue to garden while this was happening? I think he was probably a little bit too concerned to garden, but it kind of reminded me of like... Like a battery's not included kind of thing. Or that Twilight Zone episode with um, where, where they, they they invaded her farmhouse. You remember that one? Oh, that's the that's the one with no dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is actually was uh, one of France's most investigated uh, events. Hmm. People from the government came out and they did like so- sample soil samples and stuff, and they um, they said that uh, it w- the ground underneath where the disc landed was compacted. And uh, there was a, a temperature difference. Uh, I'm sorry about that. And there was also some kind of like weird metal sludge in the ground where that was. Yeah. So they didn't have any photos or anything, but there's like this after, uh, uh, I don't know what the CSI detectives would call it, like <laughs> this tertiary evidence yeah. laying around. Then you got some kind of green stuff on your ground. <laughs> well, soccer blue. <laughs> I'm going to have to take some of your dirt. Uh, there's the Rendlesham Forest incident. Oh, yeah. That's uh, a good one. Yeah, that's the uh, at uh, Bentwaters in England. A triangular-shaped craft landed in the woods in these 
Uh, these fucking yeah, it, they remind me of like the Keystone Cops of, of fucking like <laughs> Air Force like police guys got sent out because they thought there was an airplane crash in the woods. It's very Doctor Who, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's American. They're Americans. Right, no, Ameri- but I mean, like, the whole concept. Yeah. Is- so they go out, and they're, like, taking notes, and the ship's just sitting there, and they're like, okay, well, let's go to bed. Yeah. And so they went home, and they went to bed, and then they went out in the morning, and it was gone. And it left these three imprints on the ground where, like, the it was like a tripod, I yes. guess. Like, it left, like, a, a tripod. Uh, another good one is the Chicago O'Hare incident. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. In 2006, a group of United uh, employees um, reported to the feds that there was a giant saucer hovering above gate C-17 for two minutes. Um, yeah, there's a saucer here on uh, gate C-7 hovering out of there. <laughs> if you look out to the right of the plane. <laughs> well, um, after the two minutes, this thing took off, and it... It vipped off so fast, it left like a wily e. coyote, like fucking print the in the sky. In the yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have they have pictures of it. It's yeah. like a perfect circle <laughs> out of the clouds. <laughs> now I save this one for last. Okay. Uh, this is in 1977. Uh, a UFO, uh, well, a group of UFOs attacked Brazil. Um, it attacked a island called. Colliers. Mm-hmm. So these UFOs were beaming people with fucking intense radiation. There was actually <clears throat> 35 Brazilians officially diagnosed with radiation poisoning from the the, wow. the beaming. Yeah. Hmm. That's that's a hell of a tan. Yeah, it's like uh the Brazilian I always thought it was like it had to do with their the bikini style. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or how they wax or shave. <laughs> Nice. Well, thank you. For- you know, you forgot the uh, back in the seventies, the Star Child came down, and he uh, joined the Demon, oh, and we formed the band Kiss. Yes, I know. <laughs> we found a cat in an alley. <laughs> we said, you know what? You play the drums, and you guys fought the f- fucking Phantom of the Park. So awesome! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So Dan, thanks for coming down and bullshitting about UFOs. Oh, absolutely, with me. Yeah. absolutely, it was fun. Um, you want to throw out some of your links and stuff, and we'll wrap this sucker up. Sure. Um, you can head on over to ninthstory dot com. You can find links to all the stuff that we do. Um, our our little baby podcast right now. The lift is going to be ending in a couple episodes. That's at victoriaslift dot com. Uh, but yeah, everything's over at ninthstory dot com. You go to there, you'll find links to everything. All right, you're um. Also, the one of the kingpins behind the Society 13 podcast network. Yeah, I'm, which, I'm, I'm constantly uh, trying to recruit folks for that. And you're you're constantly webs- kingpinning. That's right. <laughs> Create, building and polishing that website, making it awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of great uh, there's a lot of great shows on there, including this one, the Abercast. That's correct. So, yeah, there's if you if you like the Abercast, you'll find other stuff on there you like. Um, there's History Goes Bump, which is a great podcast about the paranormal. Uh, of course, we have a bunch of story podcasts on there with Listen and Ninth Story and the Wicked Library and There's um Go 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 Gross Girls. There's the Queens of NC Seventeen. Correct. Uh, there is um, Kettle Whistle Radio. Mm-hmm. There is the Pop Off with Martise. There's a Prog Watch with the Prog Squatch. If you like, if you if you like your adult stuff, you know you can you can head on over there and listen to Dick Dangle and Dangling, Dangling After, after Dark. Dark. Keep calm and dangle on. That's correct. <laughs> Interviews lots of porn stars, so if you're into that kind of thing. So we got a little bit of something for everybody, I That's think right. is what you're saying. That's correct. <laughs> All right. I've been your host, John Towers. Go remember to check out uh, www.stigmatastudios.com. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Next week, we are going to have... Steve Matico. No. We're no. going to have author and Brazilian jiu-jitsu... He won third place in the uh, Expert No Gi Championship last weekend. Jesse, Jesse. Saxon. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's going to come in. We're going to talk about ancient civilization. Awesome. And then after, then uh, next week after that, it's going to be Steve Batico talking about Bigfoot. Bigfoot the cryptid. Yes, not the monster truck. Not the monster <laughs> truck. <laughs> not Tony Rosick from, from Prague Watch. Thanks again, Daniel. I appreciate it, buddy. No problem, buddy. Thank you for listening. And we hope that you enjoyed the show. Please send an email or find us on social media and let us know what you think about the show.
We would appreciate it if you would give us a five-star rate and review wherever you find your favorite podcasts. You can find Stigmata Studios, graphic, novels, and comic books at apricast.com.